All right, y'all, welcome back. So here we are doing another, I guess, dual reaction is what we're calling it now. So the last one is pretty interesting. Before we were, we were checking out the Royal Marines and the, the U.S. Marines doing CQB. And uh, I think we're going to continue with that trend of reacting to CQB videos. Because, again, it's, it's cool to see how we both, you know, will we'll implement certain things or do tactics a little bit differently. Now, this video is by UF Pro. And uh, if you haven't seen these videos, these guys are really solid as far as... Uh, sort of changing the game when it comes to CQB and designing their tactics. So a lot of the stuff you'll see is pretty, uh, it, it's, it's kind of strange, especially if you come from a normal infantry standpoint. A lot of the ta these tactics might seem a little bit unorthodox, but I mean, I, I'm definitely excited to check it out because uh, it should be pretty interesting to see how these guys sort of change the game. Yeah, definitely. <coughs> so 10 minutes long it's not too bad this is sort of like the uh the roundup of, of all their series but i think they have several videos that are almost 20 minutes long yeah i think i've seen one of them before but not this one i know that yeah they got some professionals going to this though <laughs> so all right quick summary I will approach the narrow angle, I will stop, I will orient, check, check to the back, I will listen to the environment, do I want to clear the screen? Yes, I want to. I will. So before we get into it, have you ever practiced doing one-man room clearing? Uh, not military, no, not at all. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I, I guess it is something you should train as like a contingency, but if, I, if I'm at the point where I'm doing one-man room clearing, I'm probably going to bounce. <laughs> it's probably yeah, going to pretty bad it's yeah it's not something that i would do first off definitely um i mean you know yourself it's it's more the fact that you don't go in a room on your own <laughs> yeah exactly it's going to be very it, uh, again it's sort of like about you know survival at that point and just making sure you're being, being able to preserve yourself but i guess maybe if you're trying to to clear your house when there's a bump in the night you might use one man clearing but yeah. i mean i have plenty of buddies i mean that'll, that'll come over and help me clear my house out <laughs> yeah well i mean if you're doing your house you know all the little nooks and crannies so that's your advantage really yeah. isn't it at the end of the day yeah that's but true. it's not something that i would think about yeah we'll see how these guys do it start working with the apex of the threshold my feet gun and eyes are synchronized with the threshold i will snap the 90 degrees i will continue to slice continue to slice i will attack the corner as mm. soon as i decide if it's enough for me and as soon as I will attack the corner, I will give a quick check to the back to make sure that everything is fine. Or in this case, I have to deal with the door and so on and so on. For us, again... So, yeah, they're very... He is very monotonous with the, the actual clearing portion of that. Yeah. Which I guess isn't too bad, but at the same time, it could be a little bit uh, sketchy when it's just yourself. Yeah, and then that part there where he kind of stops in the door doorway. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think what he's trying to, if I was looking at it, I think he's trying to use the doorway as a bit of cover. Yeah, yeah. So that I've seen at least training with the Israelis, they really like to utilize the the door frame as cover. Um, yeah. Which honestly isn't really too bad of an idea, but it's just uh, when you're doing one man room clearing, it's going to be sketchy regardless. So when he's yeah. in the room and he's turning around without pointing his weapon over there, that's literally just him checking his back. Which I mean, I guess it makes sense, but. Kind of yeah, I mean, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't obviously would be able to, to move with it. So, but at the same yeah. time, it still, it still makes you think, oh God, what? Well, well, you could be finished, couldn't you? Straight away, that could be done, and then. Yeah, yeah. I would, if I had any flashbangs, I'd be throwing them every chance I have. <laughs> this will not be one hundred percent realistic because we're trying to replicate a realistic situation. Um, so what will happen is the following: you will be facing that direction, you are that direction. I am here. I have no idea where my friend is at. At some point, <laughs> something is going to happen, and we'll have to adjust my position to them. Okay, guys, you are clear to go. You can say your letter. Just five seconds delay from each other. We will do a quick demonstration after that. I've seen this. Fight. Pretty cool. Okay, as soon as you are on threat, bam, 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 bam. Whatever you can say. Okay, three, two, one, and let's start. Hmm. 
So, uh, again, these guys look like, <laughs> I don't even know what they do, but they look super high speed with all their weapons and whatnot. Yeah. Now, have you ever done any sort of like movement drills like this, as far as like CQB is concerned? No, not, not, not anything like that at all. Um, the only thing that scares me a little bit is, I mean, you'll know, unless you've got a blank firing de uh, detachment on, you're not going to put weapon and they got mags in. So it... Yeah, I'm, it, not, I'm not sure how, that, it, how that's rolling. <laughs> I mean, we, well, you know, we're all taught, you know, you, you don't point that the, the muzzle at anybody unless you're going to be uh, doing the old business. So... Hmm. Uh, they do seem to be doing a pretty good job of dropping it and driving it to the certain direction so it's good yeah. as far as the the violence is concerned now another way you could utilize this is just making sure you're not shooting past your buddy so being able yeah. to actually move up online is is pretty solid it's sort of like implementing normal infantry tactics with like cqb it's kind of interesting yeah and I'm, like you said at the start obviously they, they it's hard to you know actually do this properly because they're in a little, you know, they're probably in a little box there in, in an open room. So the point is to help them maneuver and, you know, come to the target quicker. I'm, I'm assuming that's what that purpose is. Yeah. Pretty cool drill. Yeah, in reality, they probably wouldn't have this much room to be doing all this, but... No. Okay, guys, so basically, we talked about the angles, different room shapes. We talked about how we can manipulate those angles into our advantage, right? We focused primarily on nice. clearing those rooms. With all yeah, the if you doors. paused it for a second, yeah. I think this this is a German unit, if you, if, yeah, yeah. If you um, look. It looks like just the way that it's actually spelled and whatnot. And, and then, then on the, the MP7s, too. Well, if you look on the guy with the MP7 back, he's got a little German flag. Oh, does he? Yeah, you just you just see it if you watch. So what we're gonna do now is we will focus, oh, wait, on, uh... we focus primarily on clearing those rooms with open doors. Oh, okay. As he comes in, you'll just, yeah, you yeah. just catch a glance yeah. of it. So, again, I'm not sure exactly what they're gonna be doing here, but I, I know he was mentioning angles and whatnot, and that's, that's a huge part of CQB. Like we used to call it like a game of angles. So if you can manipulate yeah. those angles to your advantage, it definitely works out in your favor. Oh yeah, without a doubt. So what we're gonna do now is we will focus on clearing these rooms with closed doors. Does it affect the angles or mm. it remains the same angles in definition? Stays the same, stays the same. Everything system stays the same. The yeah, there stays you go. The same, but you will see. Okay. Before I will start, I just want to go with you through definitions. Some of them will be familiar to you, some not, but it's really important because terminology is everything. Good. Well, don't forget when you're interacting with a door, weapon up and not down. Okay, you can get blocked. Okay? Good. Hmm. So, um, I, I, I don't know the premise from the training here in the sense of is everything, you know, this is, this is police search and everything has to be a little bit more methodical um, yeah. in the sense of s slower. Where obviously, if this was like a deliberate action, hmm. you wouldn't be opening the door, waiting a few seconds. It'll be open, and then so I'm assuming this is tailored. Yeah, it's to the client. It, well, it's weird because like with with police, a lot of times they have to deal with like hostage situation, and if they're SWATs, they have to be pretty quick just because things yeah. can unfold very uh, poorly and very quickly. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of interesting that these guys are are doing it so monotonously. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if they do if they do tailor it specifically to these people, but it is strange how they're actually maneuvering sort of inside the door frame. Like I feel like you could still be on the outside of the door frame and and clear out most of the room without endangering. Yourself. I was about to say the same thing. You could once that door's open, except from where the door is 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 kind of half open, you can get yeah, probably yeah. 60, 70 percent of that room covered. Yeah, and I would say even the door being like slightly open would be better for you, especially if you're doing one man entry. You can go to the other corner, and at least you have some concealment from the from the corner. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, very interesting. Exactly. Yeah. Good. I don't know why they're opening the door themselves. Though it's kind of weird. Again, something I was just thinking myself. You'd want 
someone else to do that, and then you go in. Yeah. So we, we could see he was doing the uh, the whole rifle over the shoulder thing, which I have seen yeah. people do. But that's usually when they're like right right when they're making an entry, they would put it over their shoulder and drive it to the corner. If you're outside the room, you can still get it pretty. You can still get it shouldered. Yeah, and I know some people may ask why they do that, and that's to try and keep that um, muscle discipline out of the way as you're in the room, so you're not giving yourself away, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I, I mean, I think he has enough room. He could give a little bit of standoff for himself. Yeah. Excellent. Very good, you see? So, so he actually bailed back to the narrow. He saw that the door came back like an anomaly, and he went to the narrow. Very good. That's perfect. Mm. Because then he was able to foresee if there was any problem coming, whatever. Yeah, very good. So for a friction of a moment. But like I think you were saying, if this is Israeli, potentially, I wonder if sometimes they have to do that because of the threat they have and the, and yeah and the, they've mastered it. If that makes any sort of sense. Yeah, it, it seems like he did a, a little bit better there, where like he was able to back up and get a little bit of standoff before actually, you know, taking his muzzle inside the room. So it yeah. didn't look too bad there. That gun in his body triggered that, that angle over there. That means if someone is standing over here, he has the time to, mm. huh, gun, and huh, I need to do something here. Even if I will try to shoot him and he will be super fast and he will go through, the next guy, the third guy, whatever, they will get shot. Why? Because it's, it's a good point. Another issue what, mm. which will be really interesting, that is that if he will, will see me, what will be his natural reaction? Turning around. But he's also coming around the corner, right? So we have inefficiency because no one is covering up ahead. Plus, there is a high chance with pistols or MP7s that, you, uh, that we will have here friendly fire. Okay? Mm. So let's see how we can do it more efficient. But in the same time, how we can also ta tailor it a little bit into human behavior. Make sense? So I like how he's saying how it, it triggers the corner. So with, with CQB and just moving inside an enclosure, like you are triggering certain areas when you enter it. So it's interesting how yeah. he actually mentions it like that. And then and there he was talking about human behavior as well. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and actually, if you think, I, I don't think that's something where I was ever taught of how, how would an individual actually react and do stuff inside that room or that's quite interesting to see actually. Yeah, because it would be natural for, if you're going a certain direction, if you, if you see something in your peripheral and you probably know it's a bad guy, you're probably going to want to, want to just cover your own ass but yeah. yeah you do have a job to do in cqb and it's kind of sketchy just you just need to be able to trust everyone really yeah you do okay so stop as soon as you recognize from here that the 45 is coming you compress the gun as soon as you see that he mm. compresses it you see the problem it's yours you will take a step forward slightly just in front of him a little bit exactly body contact and let's move Exactly. I like that. Body yeah, contact. yeah, the body contact. So you know him, he's moving with you. Exactly. You recognize the problem. Compress the weapon. I like that. I mean, this is obviously working in a in a more open slash CQB place. Yeah, it, I mean, like actually going across the the danger area like that. We never practice actually bringing your weapon up just to make sure you're not showing yourself before you go around it. So that's pretty. That's pretty cool that he's actually throwing that in there. So their timing yeah. is really well when they're actually going past the corner. I like that. I do. Yeah. Of twisting it and just line it down. Exactly. Be aware about the angles. Yeah. Slowly, slowly. Okay. Forty-five. Weapon down. Compress it. Let him take the lead. You will be mm. slightly forward. Elbow like this. Perfect. And let's go. Yeah. Exactly. You are with him. Yeah. Very good. Clean angle. Clean so. Angle. Let's go. Obviously, that's all about the plates protecting your oppo there as well, your mate. Yeah, yeah. You know, keep it safe as well. So that I like that. I really do. Yeah, I know. I think, what, go ahead. I think the Eurotech one and MP7 is a little bit overkill. I, I think it looks <laughs> awesome. Honestly, that'd be like my, my top choice for CQB, either that or P90. But, yeah. yeah. I, do is, like the, I do like the look of the MP7, though. Yeah, I wish I could get one in the civilian market. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it is cool that he's implementing the body armor protection as well. Because you always want to do the body armor and the, uh, I guess, the, the lead protection, as we used to call it. Yeah. Angle, let's go. So I will approach the narrow angle. I will stop just like we always learn. By the way, I'm on my weaker side, right? So if you, if you have time and you have a local surprise, here is the time to do 
a shoulder transition. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Only if you have the yeah. time. If you expect any person to come out, well, you should not do it. Make sense? Okay, from here I'm starting to slice. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. I'm slicing. All good. And, oh shit, I see a wall. Where is the responsibility shift to? To this area, right? Okay, so from here, I will shift. Slice it if needed. Mm. I will attack it. Look over shoulder. And then I can start working on the next problem. And so on and so on. Yeah, that's a good point. His so <laughs> look at look at this. <laughs> uh, wow. So my only looking at that, he's he's already sliced that and already seen that corner when he's when and then he's gone back in. Yeah. And he says, Where does the responsibility shift to? I thought he was gonna say the wall to the to the right where the door is. But then maybe the, the door and the wall were quite parallel, so therefore yeah. that's why he did what he did there. Yeah, he's probably just minimizing it. Just it, he sees a wall, he probably thinks the other corner is a little more dangerous. But yeah. his his footwork was pretty good. Now I can yeah. say we didn't practice too much with with switching arms, but I did see the uh, the UK counter terror police instead of switching like their actual shoulders and or uh, at least switching their hands, they would just switch shoulders and sort of just yeah. push the stock to the other side, which. And I, I practice it a little bit. It's kind of interesting to, to try it like that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, um, I mean, like, if you look to the UK military with um, the SA, uh, the SA, um, yeah. old one when I was in training, uh, it, the, the cocking handle didn't have like a, a deflect, like a round deflector on it. Okay. <laughs> so if you tried to, doing that and you would never really did do that you was always taught yeah right eye dominant that's the only way you're going to shoot yeah. um you'd get this brass in your face but then uh, they, they they made a new cock and handle which is a bit like your round deflector oh, okay. and um or your cartridge deflector and you could do it but not many lads did anyway it just it wasn't the SAE isn't designed to be you know ambidextrous in that in that sense yeah, I remember when I when I first started shooting my uh, X95, my Tavor, I realized that it didn't really have a good uh, brass deflector, and switching yeah. arms wasn't uh, wasn't really going to happen too well. No, but it definitely is easy to switch arms with a bolt hub. Oh yeah. Nice. Huh. This is good, good like a uh, non-verbal clearing. Yeah. They definitely understand what each other is doing. So another interesting thing you can see here, like. He, yeah, there's only two people, so they can't really maintain the long security, but he yeah. goes inside the room and he sort of uses the door frame as, as a cover. Now, I know when I left CQB school, they changed it. So if there was a hallway and there's a room that was clear, you would sort of uh, jump into that room and use that door frame as cover. So you're not just standing in the open. Which makes complete sense. And if you, like you're saying, no comms, obviously in this scenario, if, if everything's clear and it hasn't gone loud, then there's no need to talk. Because yeah. then if you're clearing and trying to surprise, then you don't have to. You don't have to let everyone know you're there. Yeah, they're they're working pretty well together. Nice. I liked how he also backed up when he was standing up too. So he's not hitting his buddy. <laughs> yeah. Well, here we go. Oh, that looks so cool. <laughs> Police, turn around, turn around, stop. Did you shoot him? Get on the ground, get on the ground. Yeah. Oh, that was an airsoft rifle. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, it sounded like he shot him. Yeah, it was an airsoft rifle. <laughs> We can argue this a lot. Yeah. Identification. identification. <laughs> that was a very uh, police move right there, as far as him reaching for the hip and blasting him. <laughs> I would say, <laughs> yeah, in the military, that would be a lot harder to explain. You have way more people asking questions for whatever reason. Oh yeah. 
But another thing, like, just even doing CQB, you really need to have the combat mindset of, like, even if you're going around the door, a lot of people just don't even expect to see anything. So sometimes you'll see people, they'll see something, and then they'll be like, like, oh, they'll get, like, spooked a little bit because they weren't, they weren't hoping to see anything. Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing is, is obviously, as, as military personnel, uh, if we're going to clear, we, it's because there's a threat inside. We know there's a threat. So yeah. we, we don't potentially have to PID a weapon in the hand because yeah. if, we're, if we're engaging it because either we've been engaged, then we know the threat's in there and we've got to clear it to stop it from happening again. So, And, and the Afghans were very like, oh, we'll just drop our weapons. But actually... It, it doesn't work like that in a war zone sometimes. It's like we're going in and every, you know, potentially every person yeah. in there, yeah. you know, as, as we know, um, in yeah. Afghan, women and children are gone. If they're contacting from compounds, they're gone. It is only men ever in there yeah, right. because they don't want them to get hurt. Yeah. I mean, Especially if you drop like a 500 pounds on top of it as well. <laughs> yeah. That'll send them away. <laughs> And a lot of times you you don't deploy with like flashbangs and whatnot. So a lot of times yeah. these rooms will just get a, a frag grenade and and yeah, yeah. call it a day. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately that's just yeah because you, you haven't got time to to, to constantly. You just got to get rid of the threat and crack on with the job. Yeah, the, the Israelis especially they called it uh, going wet when they would just start throwing frags and whatnot. <laughs> It's when you throw a thermal barrack in there and it just destroys the whole compound. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. Take your time, take your time. Come in. Okay, what are you looking for right now? You see the threat, what are you looking for? On the left side of the gun. All right, what is the priority, the corner or this guy right now? Now the corner. Now? In this moment, I exactly so you will try to get the corner but in the same time try to keep some kind of peripheral uh, uh, co co connection with the body yeah. all right so let's continue those are some nice airsoft guns corner and bomb the body. yeah Very good. yeah so i mean that's pretty nice transition going from taking down the threat and actually moving to the corner it's a very good thing to train on yeah no without a doubt and um again very i think this is very tailored to the police mentality where from a military um, aspect and depending on what unit you are if you were a you know a tier one unit you'd probably double tap him again <laughs> yeah That'd be the, and it would do uh, where potentially we would double tap see you stopped clear the room and then uh have to you know potentially administer first aid if if needed which is and we're here he's i noticed with with the american police where if they shoot someone they handcuff them first clear them first and then they start administering first aid yeah i i know from like deployed it's hard like with the psychological standpoint it's hard to not get the tunnel vision especially like if you engage someone and then you're trying to move on to something else a lot of times people get tunnel vision and i mean yeah. you, you see it with police shootout videos too like they'll get the handcuffs because they're trained to do that but transitioning to the medical age is it's like such a secondary thing yeah but it's good to see though that they're, they're, they're not just like put as many rounds as possible but actually <laughs> carry on clearing which is quite nice to see because then there could be no threat in there yeah they're staying pretty controlled i wonder how many of these are airsoft guns now <laughs> yeah i reckon quite a bit of them makes it a lot less cool which you know funny enough you say that um if this is Germany, which I think it is, because of the way some of the writing was on the wall. Yeah. Uh, in Germany, the airsoft weapons are not allowed to have uh, attachments except from the site. Really? Yeah, and, and I don't remember why or who, who told me that. I remember seeing it somewhere, and, and yeah, so that would make sense why a lot of them don't have torches in a dark place. Hmm. That's, yeah, that's, I know, like, with Canada, their weapons have to be either, like, transparent or, like, a, a, a light green so it's yeah. pretty it's pretty funny to see some of the airsoft rules. I know in the US you're supposed to have the, the orange tip, but a lot of times people yeah. just take it off and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> Where here it's um so you it's not even called a license. Basically it's called Jakara, where if if you go and play every every Sunday for so many months, it allows you to buy a riff. And a riff is a real imitation firearm. Uh, but the thing is 
it's not the type of weapon, it's just how it looks. So here, if you don't have a Yukara, you've got a handguard and a stock that's bright blue. But when you get it, you can take them off and put what you, you're not meant to, but people do. They just put whatever they want. On. <laughs> yeah. so it just defeats the purpose. That's funny. It's going to be interesting. Nice. I don't think he cleared out his corner though. <laughs> I, I think he did. I think he just went in. And... So it was. It was interesting how he did. How he took a knee. I mean, a lot of times when you know there's a threat, you can pretty much come around the corner already firing just to make sure you can get that foothold. Yeah. But it was cool that he he still dropped to the knee just to. To add a little extra level of mystery as far as what was going on. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, he's he's moving. There you go. Nice. Hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, you can see he definitely knows what he's doing because he, he does implement things a little bit differently from other people, but a lot of times yeah. people don't really try and innovate on, on CQB too much. So it's cool. No, it's and cool it's, it. I think I said it one moment, it's a bit like um, you can't reinvent the wheel. Right. Um, so, you know, you've just got to adapt to the situation where I think, um, like I said, the British and the not so much like used to in the old days, stack up like the Yanks did. Mm -hmm. And then we realized actually how proficient it could be. And then we adapted it to our type of tactics. And so, yeah, you can see, I've never done much one man. So that was interesting to see that. <laughs> yeah. I, I've practiced it. I, I'm not going to lie. I have practiced doing like one man stuff, like in my house and whatnot. And it is completely different when you actually know the, the layout of the house and whatnot. But yeah. even still, regardless, it's always going to be super sketchy. You kind of just need to be violent or, or quick when you're doing stuff like that. Yeah, well, that's it. It's the violence of action. So you've got to get in there and, just, and finish it. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit, it's a bit, in a sense, scary side for me. Like going ham to be methodical and be very kind of, very deliberate in a sense that you're, you're you're doing that and then you're coming back and then you're moving around and then you, and it's like oh okay that's a bit yeah. slow for me because you're just so used to being gun ho get in there and clear the threat yeah it's even cool like implementing certain things like flashlights can really give you a leg up on the enemy because i remember when we were doing like force on force like with the uh, paint rounds or the simunition yes someone having a flashlight just confuses you if you can do anything to well, like, I mean, confuse them, it, it works a lot. If you've got the ability to put it on a stripe as well, like just, and it yeah. is dark, it just completely... Um, hey, Owen. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Wait, just grab, grab Bramley for me for a second. <laughs> little monkey. He's a, he's a little... I tell you, he's a beagle. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't pay attention to him, mate, <laughs> that's it. He's, he's like... Rah! Yeah. He just wants you to say hello to him. My yeah, so um, same way, <sighs> mate. He's four, but you'd think he's about two years old, <laughs> like human years. Yeah, anyway, right. so well, yeah, flashlight. So we took like so strobes, like strobes. I don't know if you've ever had that in. in yeah, the, yeah. That's annoying. I know. I hate it. Yeah, like I. So I didn't use it um, in the military. I do have them on my personal firearms. But when I was playing airsoft one time, someone used it on me, and I was like. There's no way that's like legal. But at the same time, I'm like, why am I complaining about this? Like, that's such a smart idea. Yeah. It's so simple. It <laughs> is, and, and and especially in mega dark, that's it. Your your science, science gone if you've got. So it's, yeah. it's, it's 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 interesting. Yeah, it's like a big psychological thing too. You like, maybe, am I getting lit up right now, or is that a light? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's cool to see. Because I I've played an airsoft game where I've turned, and I've seen it, and I've gone like that. And I've looked and I'm concentrating on where that's coming from. So I'm thinking, and then I'm getting hit from another angle because they've, what they've done is they've put a dummy because they know you'll concentrate on the, on the strobe. And actually uh, it's a very clever little thing. Yeah. And I mean, even still like burns that like light into your eyes too. 
So yeah. it's like you need to start looking on the outside of your like vision to see anything. Yeah, no, definitely. But then I, I remember um, serving when I served, uh, when we first started putting, we never used to have any um, Picatinny rails on our S80s. Mm. So we had, used to have to tape a, ma uh, um, a Magalite to the front. Okay. And that's what we had. We didn't have button print like, like And then you look at it now and you're thinking, why? Like, like it was the most stupid thing. You know, you'd have to twist the front to get it on. <laughs> you know? I mean, like, even during Operation Nimrod, the SAS had those giant, like, mag lights or whatever on top of their MP5s. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's And cool. all it was was, like, a, a button, like a crappy button on top. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, nowadays you got like lasers, IR lasers, flashlights all in one. Yeah, and it's not even like uh, for us. I mean, that was 2000 and when did I do that? So when I was to 2004 getting ready for Iraq. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're only 16 years ago, man. It just shows you the, like, the, the progression, how quick it that happens. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of depressing in a sense, but I mean, it's good for us being in the military and yeah. doing that. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. I mean, just the kids better yeah so all right well yeah i hope you guys uh enjoyed our little dual reaction this one is pretty interesting again we're starting to implement more things that we wouldn't actually see in the, in the u.s or uk military so it's cool to see these these kinds of videos if you guys have any recommendations for anyone who, who's doing a little bit unorthodox or who's sort of innovating on the room clearing or tactics in general definitely feel free to, to send that our way and uh yeah it'd be awesome to check it out but hope you guys enjoy the video again if you haven't if you haven't checked out our channels Definitely go and check them out, subscribe, and hit that bell so you're notified whenever we upload any more videos. But that is it for this one, so we'll see you all in the next one. Stay safe.